is responsible for Toronto's unaffordable prices? Well, that is a complicated question and it comes with a lot of responsibility and blame. So let's look at the most blamed entities when it comes to unaffordable prices here in Toronto and see if that blame was put in the right spot. First up, the developers. Many people do like to blame the developers for the higher cost of housing here in Toronto, but their margins are actually quite tight. So when a developer plans a project, they usually go to the big money first. That's usually a pension fund or a very rich family that will back them and who feel comfortable that this particular condo is going to make some money. Now, once that goes through, they will make some money on the back end, but it's not that much. And when you go to a pre-con now and you see the high prices, you might be wondering, why are the prices so high then? And I think if you look a little closer, you will see that it has a lot to do with the taxes, uh, the cost of the land that was purchased, and also the cost of labor and supplies that has gone up quite a bit in the past few years. So the developers really don't have a lot of room to bring down prices. Now, the developers are not wonderful people. They are meant to make money and that's not such a bad thing, but at the end of the day, they are causing some problems in the system, but it has more to do with the kind of condos that they build. Often when developers come forward, they try to squeeze as many small condos into a building as they can because that tends to be the most profitable. And therefore we have a lot of small 300 to 400 square foot condos here in Toronto that are more suitable for an Airbnb than they are for real living and they need to cater more to something a little bit bigger so that it can attract more real people into the market. I think that investors can be a scapegoat as well. 15.9% of all Ontarians own two or more properties and if you're someone who owns no properties that may seem a little unfair. Now, when a condo first comes to completion, usually they are 50 to 70% owned by investors. So many people look at that and think, well, maybe if that was sold to people who were not investors, there would be more housing. But the truth is you need 70% of the units sold before you can even build something. And the people who buy condos in pre-construction before the building is built is usually investors. So in many ways, investors are responsible for the creation of many condos in this city. Now, I don't want to suggest that investors are angels and they create condos for us all over Toronto. There is some downside to having investors in condos. When you have too many investors, they are usually not very present for condo board meetings, for the upkeep of the building. When you have more owner-occupied spaces in a condo, you tend to have a better run condo. Real estate agents are also a source of blame when it comes to higher prices here in Toronto. And to some degree, that is true. Real estate agents will try to get the best price for their seller when it comes to selling a home through their marketing, through their staging, through their relationships with other agents. But I should also point out that it's not always about getting the highest price for the seller, but sometimes it's about getting the lowest price for the buyer. So those pressures that cause the real estate agent to push for a higher price, there is also another real estate agent pushing for a lower price. And in the recent market, which has been a buyer's market in uh, condos here in Toronto, we are seeing a lot more buyer real estate agents pushing down the price of some of these sales. Immigration has also been blamed for the higher cost of housing here in Toronto. Now, whether you're coming from outside of the country or if you're coming from just two hours outside of Toronto, anybody who is added to the city is another demand on housing, whether you are from Sudbury or whether you are from overseas. But at the end of the day, if you cut demand, you are going to have prices come down a little, whether it's in uh, the cost of housing or the cost of rents. Why this is a mistake is because we need those immigrants with our aging population. We are going to have a mass retiring soon and we're going to need some Canadians here to do the work uh, that everybody is retiring from. I should also point out that the construction industry relies heavily on immigration to fill a lot of its needs and with those immigrants not coming to Canada in quite the same numbers they used to, we may have some restrictions on construction and therefore some buildings are not going to be built as quickly. Lastly, we have the government. Now, I know many of you may be thinking that I am building up to blame the government for everything 
and I am certainly not here to do that. But I do have to say that the government does have some problems with too much bureaucracy, too many taxes, and way too many rules and regulations in terms of building. There are too many roadblocks for building properties here in Toronto. Now, I am not anti-government. I do think they do some great things. For example, they have a great project happening at Downsview Station run by some very smart people, and I look forward to seeing what they do there. But we do need to focus more on the supply side. We need to incentivize those developers to build more properties, and we need to move things along a little quicker without so much red tape. I know that's not the only solution, but I think it is one, and I think it is a big one, so we should consider it. I'm David Coffey of Bosley Real Estate.